Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, today we're speaking with Kenya and Carl Stevens. They're in an open relationship, an amazing relationship. And if you listen to the end, you'll find out, uh, we'll talk a little bit about Uplevel Communication, which is their book that is the ultimate solution to saving relationships and eliminating hurtful, damaging, and meaningless arguments. You want to know how? Listen to our show. Hey guys, it's John and Jackie of OpenLove101.com. Welcome to our show, and we are so privileged and honored to have with us today Kenya and Carl of Progressive Love Academy, which is a uh, coaching conglomerate and online love academy, and we can't wait to hear more about that. Thank you guys for being here today. Thank Appreciate you. Thank it. you. Good to be here. Absolutely. We love it here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so you both are married, is that right? Yes. Yeah. We've been married. It'll be 28 years this August. 28 years? Yes. yes. That, that is, is so awesome. <laughs> It's been fun. He's yeah. a good person to be married to I'm, for I'm 30 years. Guy. Yes. <laughs> yes. You're keep him? He's, <laughs> well, he's taught me freedom. He's let me be a free woman. I never, when I got married, I didn't know this is the direction we were headed. No, Kenya certain... was already free. <laughs> when, I, when I met her, listen, when I met her, she was like stomping around D.C., like, you know, fighting the establishment and fighting for women's rights and all that kind of stuff. And she was also a member of an all women's band yes. called Soul Food Symphony. Yes. So she was already, you know, yes. you know, fighting to get out of the matrix and, and to free minds and that kind of stuff. All and right. that was one of the things that's so attractive about her. Thank you. But yeah. I wasn't yet sexually or sensually free. That wasn't a part of the revolution at that time. Yeah. No, that, that wasn't popular back then. <laughs> no. Talk about sexually free women and, and liberated liberated but in women. your in your mind were you feeling that way or did you have an indication that's who you were were you dating multiple men or? i was secretly i was i mean i have been dating multiple men in high school and in college i just never said that or i didn't know the word polyamory or swinging or life i didn't know that but definitely i was but it was on the down low yeah you weren't able to stand inside that truth no yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we met on a blind date. We both went to Howard University. He was mm -hmm. getting his MBA, yeah. and I was an undergrad. And I was just, you know, looking for the MBA students. Like, hey, mm -hmm. I'm really here to get married. I'm never gonna work, you know. Mm -hmm. It was really my friend who had tried to talk to her. They, you guys, his right. girlfriend lived in your building. Yes, and uh, he tried to talk to her, and Kenya was like. I think I know your girlfriend. I certainly knew his girlfriend. Oh. <laughs> he's like, and then he's, he's like, like oh, no, oh, no, no, it was my friend. I'm trying to get you, connect you with my friend Carl. No, nah, he was definitely trying to talk to me. <laughs> yeah. So we end up going on a blind date. Yeah. Uh, I was supposed to meet her at the movies with this guy who tried to talk to her and his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. But when we got there, Kenya wasn't there. <laughs> I'm like, what? It's like, she stood me up. I was so at the river. Up. I was meditating. I was just contemplating life and that's what i did <laughs> i just meandered to the movies and swung the door yeah. open so we were already in there watching the movie it was like okay whatever i got stood up for the first time in my life and then <laughs> like about 15 minutes into the movie we watched the movie called the show it was about like hip-hop notorious like, big and oh yeah okay guys. and um all of a sudden like the door swings open in the back of the theater <laughs> And here comes this woman meandering down the hall, like, what's going Sauntering on? Sauntering down like, the aisle. That like, you know, that's when like you can shine a light into the theater. As well. soon as I met him, I knew he was my husband. That night, I knew. And eight weeks later, we were engaged. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> what was it about him that... I just, I had a spiritual awareness. As I said, I was coming from the from meditating and I just knew that this was my husband. I mean, and he's just so responsible. He spoke so well. He looked so good. Mm -hmm. He was brilliant. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. I just knew. Keep on, baby, keep on. Right. <laughs> what else? Yeah. No, it was, it was really, it was a great connection. Yes. You know, a great immediate connection between yes. her and I. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how long were you guys together before it came out that, you might, it was her, right, Carl? And she was the one that really, well, you tell me. What, what, so where did it become more open or <laughs> what happened there? So here's, here's I'll give you my rendition of the journey. So we, we got married. Uh, we're starting the family thing and that kind of thing. And we're in a spiritual community. 
So we're just practicing meditating and yoga, all that kind of stuff. And she came to me one day and said, hey, I have feelings for somebody. I've been having dreams about one of the men in the community. Really? So yes. how comfortable were you telling him that? I mean, did you tell him just very, that smoothly? I did. I was very comfortable. I, I hugged this guy. We were doing an art painting at night mm -hmm. in the community space. And we hugged goodbye. And I had an orgasm from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet, just from the hug. So I came directly home and told, told you that, didn't mm -hmm. I? Pretty much. Yeah. And how long had you been together at that point? Four About years. four years. Yes. And what was your response to that? I was just like, you know. Like, it was so, um, I wasn't like threatened. Like, people say, oh, were you threatened by that? Or you right. feel way? Like, I didn't feel any way about it. No, like, it was I very was like, innocent. Okay. Well, so his, was this any kind of a discussion either one of you had had before this point? Prior, mm -hmm. Carl had told me that he was contemplating polygamy. When we, before okay. we got married, he said he's seen himself with several wives. I said, oh, that's <laughs> nice. I said, we'll, we'll, we'll table that discussion. Well, here's, that's cute. <laughs> here's the background. Here's the background, too, just to kind of give you all some context. The community that we were in, they practiced polygyny. Mm -hmm. okay. Polygyny is one man with multiple wives. Right. Those wives are not dating other people. Um, and at our wedding ceremony... The, we were married by priestesses and priests within that community. And the, the people who married us were polygynists. So it was a, a man and two women who actually conducted the entire ceremony. Okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So we were already aware of that, kind, of that part of the lifestyle even before we got married because right. of the community that we were in. Yes. Um, and, and obviously, our, <laughs> like from, from a man's point of view, I'm like, yo, that looks amazing. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. This is and right. being from Detroit, I was like, mm, mm, yeah. mm, mm, <laughs> no. <laughs> but no, I was open. I was open to the concept. Or I let him, I, I informed him that I was open. At the time, I was thinking, well, that would apply for women too. Right. If we should venture there someday, of course it would apply for me as well. Right. Right. But we never, like, after that initial, like, we never really we talked about discuss it, it, discuss yeah. it. So what happened was she had that experience with the guy, and she was, like, immediately in love with him. And just, we just talked about it. Mm -hmm. Now, at that time, we had marriage counselors <laughs> and individual counselors. So for the first 10 years of our marriage, we would have marriage counselors. So eventually, we talked to them about it. And they told us, no, table it. That is completely inappropriate. And I said, okay, but that didn't stop the dreams from happening, the orgasm dreams, the dream about him all the time. And that's a big thing because the important thing about that is they didn't have any solution. They didn't have a solution for us, not the marriage counselors. That's true. Like that's just yeah. that's one reason you're hanging. Yeah, yeah, it just says, no, don't do it. But that doesn't stop your body or your spirit or your yeah. energy from moving. So right. that was that step direction. one in this whole thing. Step one was... Oh, that she actually had attractions outside the marriage because we were kind of naive when we got married. I didn't know you had strong attractions for people outside of your husband or wife once you got married. I didn't know that. Me either. So you didn't know that either. I didn't know. I mean, I knew I would feel those things, but I was like, no, that's something you don't. Well, get even, into. I didn't. I didn't feel I didn't, it would be like a thing that was, would actually happen that right. was like strong or challenging. Like I felt like once I got married, that was it. Like I am done. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I understand that. So it was just a shock. When she had that, and then four years after she had that, I had that. You know, I was traveling. I was in corporate America traveling every single week. And I fell in love with a woman on my job. So I came back and told her about it. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And but how did you have... feel about that, though? Well, because I'd had the experience. I was fine. I was, I want to meet her. Mm -hmm. Let me meet her. But we weren't having outside sexual partners. Mm hmm I wasn't ever sexual with this guy. You right. weren't ever sexual with that woman, were you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, knew, I knew he wasn't. But, but, you know, I wanted to meet her. Yeah. And when I met her, I realized this is a person he needs to be with because she wasn't like me. I'm a little glam. I'm a little loud. I'm a little boisterous. Really? She was like, so mousy. Yeah. Girl, oh, oh, girl, what is tofu? What is that? What is tofu? So I was like, oh yeah, he needs somebody asking him what is tofu. Because <laughs> I don't have that question, you know. Yeah. So that's 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 how it started. Yeah. So we had that discussion. I wanted to add her as a wife because it was a real strong feeling. So I hadn't had really. I can't say I really had feelings like that before. 
where we Not know we're married. Me. Well, no, I'm talking about like when you were, were married and you feel that for somebody else. Right. So it felt strong enough and authentic enough where I was like, I want to do this. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so that's when we started to having the discussion yes. about what to do. Yes. And that's when I interjected that if you're going to do that, I would like to have that same privilege. Mm -hmm. And his answer was? Absolutely not. <laughs> no. <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> Because I've never heard of, like, a woman who's married, like, you with yeah. other men. Like, what, what, is, what is that? Yeah, what would that even look like? Yeah, like what I, does that I, mean? I've never seen it or heard yeah. it. Because, again, we were not introduced into the lifestyle. No, there was no There was no, no groups. There was no. no, I mean, maybe there was some books I never heard of the polyamory. But or there was open. nothing happening where there was any education and in, in where polyamory is popular or being talked about. So mm -hmm. we didn't even have any examples of that. So I didn't even, I've never even seen that concept before. In real life, so I couldn't even register. Like, what are you talking about? Like, just we'll just know we won't do anything. But you, you were okay with her being in love with this guy and having dream orgasms, but you couldn't cross the line into her actually sleeping with him. Yeah, because that, that again, that was so far outside of the realm of possibility for me as well. Like, again, even her being in love, like it didn't feel threatening. Like, what is that? Just like okay, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. it's it's a thing. It's kind Let's of talk about it. Let's deal mm -hmm. with it. Yeah. And I didn't really understand how she was actually feeling. You know I, could, I, I told you, but you couldn't, you no, weren't in my body. It wasn't until I had the feeling that I was like, oh, this is what is this that what feels you're like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 This is real. It. Yeah. yeah, this is real. Yeah. yeah. But even then, I still wasn't op you know, okay with her having other partners. Okay. Because the only, again, the only framework I'd ever seen is polygyny. I've seen multiple men with multiple wives operate with right. children and, and family and structure and seeing those people every day. But the wives are monogamous to the man. The wives are not monogamous. multiple That's men. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cause I was thinking that wouldn't be all bad. Multiple men with multiple wives. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but that's not what we're talking about with yeah, polygyny. Multiple polygynous examples. Yeah. yeah. So, Does that make sense? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So I said no to it. Like let's just shut it down. And then over the course of two years, we end up talking about, you know, just the concept here and there. But I think the real thing that kind of opened our eyes to, or opened my eyes, I'll say, is when we got into the Tantra training. Yes, the Tantra training helped you get out of the mode that, like the ownership possessiveness mode. Yeah. Uh, he did meet a Tantra instructor. You all have heard of Tantric work. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we might need to get started. <laughs> Man. We studied from one of the best, and we were certified by one of the best. But this man helped Carl understand that feminine energy is not something you can actually contain. The more you try to contain it, the more it's water. You can't really hold it in a vessel for that long right you understand it'll right. evaporate out the vessel yeah. you understand it'll crack the vessel it'll do so that helped him understand me as a woman but women in general yeah right? the concept of freedom for the feminine supporting the feminine and allowing it to express itself so that's where i kind of got that understanding and those lessons weren't even about open relating or polyamory. They're no, just talking about just, the feminine yeah. aspect. Yes. So as I heard that and my respect for him and, and what he was talking about, that helped me open my mind to allowing the feminine to be free. Right. And at the same time, our relationship was changing. People don't tell married folks that after a certain amount of years, the level of hormone is different. It's not released at the higher rates. You know, when you when you first get together with some that with someone, that hormone is high, it's kicking. You understand? Know but then every time you have sex, that hormone, oxytocin, dopamine, different hormones, they are released. You know, at a smaller frequency, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you don't have the same passion. It's not that you've fallen out of love; it's that it, you've bonded. All those are bonding hormones. Yeah. So you right. bonded. Now right. you need to transition more into unconditional love and other types of love <laughs> that we don't learn about in Disney. Unfortunately. No. Yeah, so we see our situation as we're bonded. Yes. Like we have a great friendship, we have really great intimacy with each other. Uh, we just share so many memories together and that kind of stuff. And it's like, we it's, have three it's, children. It's almost a perfect relationship. You know what I'm saying? Because like all the like the 
like one thing about the hormones too is that's what causes like all the arguments and the, and the conflict and stuff like that. Yes. So the sexual passion is great, but the arguments are crazy. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, ours were. Yeah, ours just, were. It just has you doing a bunch of crazy stuff. Like we, we, we have stuff for the books. Oh, So. but that was the first 10 years. Then it, it's supposed to mellow out and transition, but then say, I'm not even in love with you anymore because mm-hmm. I don't even want to sleep with you the same rate anymore. Mm-hmm. No, that's deeper love. It's not necessarily about sexual passion. Mm. So that's what we've managed to, you know, to um, transverse. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of where we are right now, you know, with our relationship and our marriage. Mm-hmm. So when did when did all of this happen? You so, know, all the books and the. So I want to make sure you guys understand, like how, like how, like why we started doing the school. Yeah. So if you look at these things that happen, they 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 were kind of shocking for us. Right. Right. So. The, the change in passion over the years, the attraction to other people, and then the Tantra. We also teach Tantra in our school because that's what opened my mind up, yeah. right? right? And like really op- opened us up. It really improved our sex life as well. Yes. Um, so we're like, this is like mandatory for everyone for relationships. Like if you don't know Tantra, like if, if sex to you is just what you see in pornography and it's just a friction thing, then it's not going to be... You're in big not, trouble. Yeah, you need to kind of spread things, some things out. So with all these lessons that we went through, that's what that's the foundation for it. We got to teach this. We started writing about it as soon as he said yes to the open relationship. Mm-hmm. Two years after that conversation where he wanted a, a partner and he said, I could not. Two years it took us to open our minds and get ourselves together yeah. to start. And then I went first. Yeah, we... we so you had we, sex first with yeah. someone else of the opposite sex. Yes. Yeah, we decided... Uh, I think it was in June, actually. Yes. To say, look, w- let's start. We it's our relationship brand new from here. Yes. Like it's a brand new ball game. So and we, we said, had worked out like little protocols and little understandings. Mm-hmm. And on that day, that's when we started blogging. That's when we started our company. Yeah. Back in the day, it was blogs. It wasn't podcast. Right. 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 So I was yeah. typing out all the yeah. experiences. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we started from there, started writing books, started yeah. to live this and teach it at the same time and build tools. Every time we had an experience that kicked our butt, we would build a tool for it. Yeah. Another experience kicked yeah. our butt. We would build a tool for it. And that, that became our, our industry. Can you yeah. share one of those? Like what, what did something happen? What kicked your butt? Yeah. Everything. <laughs> I mean, all, all throughout, even even in our monogamous phase. Yes. Like we were we were getting our butts kicked. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. a lot of the, the tools that Kenya and I developed are for just monogamous couples. Like it's not even about open relating or polyamory. Right. 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 But like this will work for with any union. So the communication was a big thing. Um, and that's why Kenya, you know, she created this up level communication system. Yeah, but to be real. I created up level because he would have his woman come to the house and they would end up staying at the house for months or sometimes years. <laughs> I mean, he's pretty. I, I now, my husband is pretty now. I think I now that differently. Oh, you remember it differently. Yeah. He remembers it. He remembers that the women come and I invite them to stay, right? Well, what's the difference you have? I mean, you have partners at the house, too. Yeah, we both have partners just, at the house. We agreed to have these people at the house. Of course. He didn't just move them in without my permission. Yeah, I would never right. Do that. Oh, you would never. But the deal was they were there. Yeah. And we didn't have a communication system that worked. Mm-hmm. Right. Our communication was just like the West. And this is our concern with people moving to poly or lifestyle. If you're bringing all the regular Western ways into this, it's not going to be sustainable that's right yeah you'd be like why is this not working right (laughs) because we're just we're we have a monogamous mindset and we're in a new environment and we haven't adapted right so we started to write those adaptations so communication for instance typically we have a conversation i don't like the fact that you didn't do the dishes well i do the dishes my way what's wrong with how i do the dishes well, we like them this way. Well, that's not the way. Well, da 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 da. Well, da 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 da. Well, da 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 da. Yeah. That's the normal language of war. We call it a language of war. Mm-hmm. That's what we learned in kindergarten. We right. learned it with our parents. We learned it everywhere in this culture. So we had to change the tenor and the rhythm of the language. Mm-hmm. Up level is a framework that helped helped us do that. Because now, if I want to say, "Hey, you didn't do those dishes," I would say, "Excuse me." You step one and up level and set a container. I need consent to vent to you. 
Speaking about how consent. you're doing the dishes. Mm, interesting way to apply consent to this thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's consent too. Women it say is. we want consent because you're touching us, but guess what? We touching those ears with our mouth out of control. <laughs> 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 So well, that's our physicality, right? Yes, you know, because yes. the men are physically strong. Yes. I mean, I, I can't physically. I can't stand up to you. So what am I going to do? I'm going to do it verbally. Yeah. Mental. Yeah. We have women are mentally strong and strong on the inside and soft on the outside. Yeah. Men are softer on the inside. Yeah. And hard on the outside. So we can easily punch them in the face without right lifting a hand. Right. So we developed up level to set those new frameworks into the language. So it really changes the language. Yeah. So if I had something to say to him, I have to ask, may I vent to you? And then I have to go beyond asking and I have to share who is speaking. Oh, this is just my ego speaking. Oh, I've done that. (laughs) (laughs) This is what my ego is going to say. (laughs) Yeah. But every time there's never a time that I will step to anyone and vent without consent without sharing who's speaking, without sharing what level I'm at, without providing safety. And then, of course, we came up with ways that you can soothe the person's ego. Well, and I think, too, you know, when you bring that up, when you talk about vent, Mm -hmm. you know, we're in a defense mechanism. And so I know even for me, it took me a while to understand that my venting is something inside me that I am not dealing with. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. You know, why would I feel defensive in a relationship with this person that I love? So what, where am I coming from? That's the key. And sometimes we don't want to unpack that stuff. Yeah. That feels more strict, harder than just, um, how how do I want to say that? It feels harder to unpack that. Oh yeah. That's to, the hardest work. Yeah. That's that's the deepest work. If you're doing that work, then you're doing some of the greatest work on the planet. Like actually looking at yourself and saying, right. where's the source of my anger? Where's the source of these triggers? And like really analyzing that, digging into that, and working to resolve it. Because yeah. it's not that your partner didn't do the dishes, mm-hmm. or that they said X, Y, and Z. Right. There's something within you that's triggered at that. Because every human on the planet is not triggered by that. That's right. A bunch of people are like, I'm cool, whatever. Like, do <laughs> yeah. Thing. I'll watch <laughs> I, like, I don't man. care if you do the dishes <laughs> at all. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm we, we have written that that is the very point of the relationship. And it's the point of the trigger. And so you can dig into those things. Yeah. So we just provide an easy model for people to do that. So we came up with five easy rules, rules in our relationship. We think rules are for fools. I'll say that right into the microphone. (laughs) Rules are for fools. But we came up with five principles that all of our couples stand on. And we've coached thousands of couples in opening their relationship. Okay. And so do you want to share what those are? Yeah. (laughs) They're real Dr. Seuss. No shame and no blame. I love that. No victims and no villains. (laughs) Mm. No cop outs and no dropouts. We don't drop out. We don't break up. There's there's nobody I would break up with. Nobody on the planet. And you're passionate <laughs> about that because I've heard Very. some of your stuff. Yes. About that. It's like we're not we don't give up on this. Why? They're humans. I don't discard humans yeah. in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. Mm. I wouldn't even discard humans. I don't my ego doesn't like. Right. Because they're gonna give me the most fodder for my growth. <laughs> 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 I, hate, I hate that sometimes. <laughs> Dang it. No cop outs, no dropouts. And um, the purpose is growth. The benefit is love. And then your favorite one. I created. Yes. I create my life. I create my life. Yeah. I mean, how empowering is that? And how often do we want to give that away? Mm. You know, it's easier to blame somebody than actually grow. Yeah. And that's it's understandable. I mean, it's hard to take full accountability for your life because sometimes we do things that, you know, aren't the best choices and they hurt other people, they hurt ourselves, or we look back and say we didn't live up to our, our potential. And just that is can be painful. Yeah. So to say like, well, that was really all me. You see what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. I was, you know, like looking back at, at my life, like, you know, I could have gone into like college sports and all these different things, but I made choices to not do that. And sometimes it's not comfortable saying, well, you just, Carl, you just made that choice to not do that. It wasn't yeah. anybody else. It wasn't yeah. like, like I used to like blame my coach. Like my coach was horrible. Like it's not that. Like, you know, there's a part of you that didn't want to persevere and push through that. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes we have a hard time facing those things. Yeah. But when you do, that's when you become that superhero that you really are beneath all those conditionings. That's right. It's the only way to get there. That's right. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I could easily blame society. I could say, well, 
I'm from Detroit. I'm African American. I grew up like this, and poverty, and blah, blah, blah. That none of that. I don't blame anyone for that. That is my path that I chose before I even got here. My video game to maneuver through so that I can become powerful. These set of circumstances. All right. I see. I love that. <laughs> Gosh, I just want to be like, yay! <laughs> but that's how we want our couples to feel. Yes, and those steps are going to provide that. That's what they do. And, you know, we have another school, which is a spiritual side of what we do, called the Mystery School. And it's really, it goes beyond relationships. This is just about your life. Mm -hmm. Just create your life. You see what I'm saying? Like, live your best life, take full accountability for it so you can tap into your power and find the happiness and fulfillment that you're actually looking for. And if that includes relationships, whether it's monogamous or open or whatever it is, great. But if that includes you being by yourself and just doing your own thing, that's cool too. Like, no judgment. Like, just whatever it is you want to create for yourself we encourage people to do that. Yes. Do it and do it well. Yeah, do yes. it well. Like, and like good you all have it. done. Like yeah. Jackie and John, in my view, you guys did something that might have been considered off the beaten path. It was considered off the beaten path. That's but sure. it, but it was yeah. your path, and That's you right. probably had to become a superhero to walk this walk. Yeah. Yeah, That's stay the consistent same. in that. Yeah. It's just incredible stuff. Like yeah. so many people, like, you know, it's hard in the beginning yeah. and you just like say, well, we don't have the, the support and all that kind of stuff and to kind of back off it. But here you guys are, you know, decades later still doing the same thing, which is that's really good work. Yeah. And that's what it takes. You know, like when we first started teaching, like we were getting hammered. There was no, like I said, there was no polyamory. We were the first African-Americans any, any in polyamory in this country nationwide for the for the first 10 years. We were alone. Yeah, we got hammered on oh, the, the television Dr. shows, show. Dr. Phil, you know, Ricky like Lake. He, was acting like we were like, you see what I'm saying? The devil or something like that. Yeah. Like, we're just talking about relationships here and everything's consensual. Like these are adults making choices about how they want to relate. Like what's the big deal? But he was trying to make it seem like it's something, it was crazy. But back then in 2011, 2012. It well, was, it was different. Yeah, it wasn't talked about enough where people understood it or even considered it right. as a viable lifestyle. You know, and, and, and what I love about that story is it gave you, more logs for the fire yes. like you didn't back away from that it probably pushed you even more so i mean look at this it's just just bubbling over and bubbling over it's like no this is, you're not going to tell me who i am i'm going to tell you who i am yes. that's right what's interesting about that is so we we were on a number of shows um monique show and michael bass and all these shows Fox eventually News. we got mm -hmm. Um, a number of production companies came to us and we want to do a show, like a, a reality show with you guys. Mm -hmm. And we had done the show, we had shopped it to all these people, these different networks, like the big networks, right? And then after about a year and a half of trying to shop it, we had already shot one episode, the guy came to us and who was an Emmy-winning producer in the industry. Right. He came to us and said, you know what I think the issue is? He says, I don't think the world is ready to see a woman who's free sexually. That's right. So this was 2012, so baby, and 2014. Right. Yeah, they're fine with the man having multiple partners and that being seen. On Sister TV. wives was out, but they're not fine with seeing a woman have the freedom to express what she wants in multiple partners. Look and at them controlling that, that narrative. It, it was. It was. We were told said straight that, up. We he like, said it straight up because he's like, no, the show is quality. Like again, I'm Emmy award winning producer. Like the show is quality. I've shot. I've sold a ton of shows. This is good stuff. And he couldn't figure out why they weren't buying it. Yeah. And then eventually he came back to us and said that's what it was. Yes. Yeah. So that, four, that was four, idea, that was four television contracts later, here we are with mm -hmm. Seeking Brother Husband. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Finally, in 2023. <laughs> right. You know, I get is is there is another show that shows a woman sexually empowered? No, there's not another show that shows not like that polyamory yeah. straight out. Mm -hmm. Not yet. Yeah. Mm -mm. <laughs> Ours is the first. Yeah. So no, yeah, we're what we have seen some documentaries that might touch upon it. I think over the years and uh, yeah, but not within so much relationships, but more just about women coming face to face with their own sexuality. Sure. Right, you know, right. which it's it's sad that it's. 2023 and we're just, we're just dealing we're getting with there. that. Yeah. yeah Perfect timing. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so when you did, when you did the, um, seeking brother husband, mm -hmm. like, did you, you know, did they approach you? What was, what was that like? I mean, how much say did you guys have and how you wanted to be represented in that? 
Oh my goodness. Well, we've been approached by so many houses, so many publishing houses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's the production company that approaches you. Mm -hmm. So we were approached in 2020 under the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And this final one, she this is the one that actually made it to network television. Um, the producer is an African American woman. And she loved Good Polly Emery. Yes. And so I felt so comfortable with her. And we talked for two years about a show where I coach all these couples and support them in yes. becoming polyamorous. Mm -hmm. Yes. When it got to TLC, <laughs> <laughs> TLC said, scratch that. We didn't know that that original idea had been scratched. TLC said, we would like to just show the four families, four polyamorous families. Mm -hmm. Polyandrous. TLC wanted to be polyandrous, which is uh, one woman with multiple partners. Right. So we didn't know they were going to do that spin on it. Okay. So we had no idea during the planning phases or any of that that, that was never what discussed. Was about. But we were happy with how it turned out because what I wanted was just for the world to be able to conceptualize this and start to play with it and spin it around in their subconscious because it's coming. This yeah. Is, this is the day that it's dawned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I want to always be able to show that. Now, yes, there were some spins, but I'm overall happy with it. Aren't you, Ben? Yeah, I mean, my thing, you know, at first it was a challenge for me because I was like, man, I thought they were going to really show our lifestyle. But um, I had to really talk to myself and say, well, if they did a show on polygyny where it was showing me and multiple wives, I'd be cool with that. Uh. So I said, I need to be part of, part of this revolution in the work that we do. I have to be able to support my wife. If she's being shown as being polyandrous. Mm. So I have to be the kind of man who's like comfortable and secure in that. Yeah. Because again, I believe in, you know, the empowered woman in that way. If she wants to express herself in that way. So I'm sure there's, a, in my mind, a lot of men who are not going to be comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. you know there were yeah. millions. So I needed to be the, the man who was strong enough to be comfortable with it. And I, again, I know my lifestyle and I know the reality of, of who I am and how I relate. But yeah, so I, I was very comfortable with that. I felt like this is really good for a lot of women. Like, women are going to see this and be like, wow, like, I didn't know you could even do this or it was even a, a possibility. So I think it's going to be very empowering for a lot of women. And so when you when you <clears throat> agreed to do this, were both of you in other relationships as well? Oh, yeah. yeah. At that point. <laughs> <laughs> My husband has women all over the planet, so I have men all over the planet. We've been in other, we've been poly for 20 years. Okay. You know, okay. almost 17 years. Okay. So, yes, we've had many, many partners. Yeah. But our literal other spouses, like okay. we have other spouses. Then we have boyfriends, girlfriends, friends. Yeah. But we do both have other spouses as well. Yeah. And what does, what is your definition then of spouse? Well, for me, um, a wife okay. is a partner who I've committed to be with. For, for life. Okay. So we're going to love each other. We're going to support each other. Um, we're not divorcing or getting separated. And we're going to build together, you know. And that's just what it's going to be. And, and for me, if a woman has the title of wife for me, then she's going to be integrated into every part of my life. So friends with my kids and be able to talk to my kids and hopefully talk to my parents and, you know, like complete and total integration. Right. So that's that's what it is for me. And that's what and that's, that's what Kenya and I have that we built. That's what we, we built. We both believe in that. And we, we think it's a strong foundation, like it's a good foundation to know that this is forever. Mm -hmm. That's the commitment. Right. We're going to work through anything that comes up, any challenge. And sometimes that's, I mean, we understand sometimes it's hard and our clients, oh, definitely. you know, like they would rather just opt out. Yeah. You know, but if out. they drop right. out, they're going to meet the same person in a new skin because that's where they were. How am I look at you and say, oh, I'm, I'm done with you? Yeah. You're me. You're reflecting my conditionings. You're triggering me where I need to be triggered. So I can discard you, but whoever I meet is you in a different skin. Yeah. So welcome to your divorce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that so, is deep. <laughs> so it's, and, and, you know, it's like, you know, John, like with the clubs, you know, it's like, look, you can put him in any continent, any city. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's going to be who he is. He's probably going to start these businesses in the same way he always has because that's just, that's who he is. So that's what we're saying. Like, just because you move him to another location, he's, still he's not going to change. Stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> wow. So, Sorry. <laughs> 
so you know, so until you it. until you actually grow from the lesson or you learn something, like you, like you said, you look yeah. inside and process that stuff. Yeah. Then it's gonna be the same exact thing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's our belief. And relationships, they give you the opportunity to like really see yourself. You know. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. They do. You know. <laughs> it's like I'm getting rid of all the mirrors. I'm not, like I'm just I don't want to see me. Yeah. But we make it so easy for our clients. It becomes a game. It's like Dr. Seuss. It's it's really fun to see the mirrors when you just understand you're in a house of mirrors and when you can just really name it. Yeah. So yeah. We, we we that's what we do. So our couples are very happily married. It's yeah. not like you're divorce proof. That's your life sentence. No, yes. right. you're divorce proof. There's nowhere to run to. Mm-hmm. No need to run. I you love know, that. One of the, going back to this, you were first to have sex with one of your partners. Yeah. Did you feel jealousy at all? Oh, yeah. It was hard. Yeah, that was one of the worst feelings I've ever had before as an adult. You know, like, because, so we decided we would do this open thing. We would both date, that kind of thing. And Kenya said, yeah, I'm going to go see my boyfriend in L.A. So I was like, cool, like, great. I was excited, like, happy. I had met him already, uh, or at least talked to him or whatever. And um, so she got on the plane to do her thing. And then it kicked in. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what am I saying? Like, what am I doing? Like, she's to have sex with another person? Like, what? <laughs> Have I lost my I was mind? Like, yeah, like I was, I had a hard time. So our three kids were home and I call home and I say, hey, can I speak to dad? Nobody know where dad is. Where was dad? In the basement drinking. <laughs> really? He doesn't even drink. Yeah, I he, not, well, maybe at that drink. time, you were not drinking. You didn't even let yeah. me have a drink on our honeymoon. Yeah. For 20 well, years, you didn't drink. And but, so, yeah, I had a hard time. Well, and I think that's one of the hardest things is even when you're in agreement with something, even when you want to do it. Mm-hmm. And then it takes place. You know, you move from the abstract to the actual thing that's happening. And then you're, it's, it's almost like your mind defies you. Mm-hmm. You're like, now, now I don't know what to do because now I'm having this, an this issue. Experience? <laughs> no, no, that's what I read that's somewhere. Interview. Like, yeah. to interview y'all next. <laughs> yeah, so I get it. You know, it's, it's like now, what do I do with this information? You know, who do I, who do you talk to? How do you? How long was she gone? Just the weekend. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And nothing happened because as soon as I got on the plane, I spiritually called into my body to start my monthly moves. Yeah, wow. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. I wanted, I was afraid too. I was afraid, would he continue to respect me? Right. I had never had sex with anybody else since I was 21. Yeah. You know, here I am, 34, getting on a flight to go see my boyfriend. Yeah, you're probably just as I'm much a, like, what am I doing? Right. I'm a mother. My three year old's at home, my five year old, my seven year old. Mm-hmm. I was just as nervous and just as like, but um, people don't understand that that happens either. Sometimes from the outside, when they have it, when they're imagining this experience happening, they don't understand that that can happen. Yeah, to where the that woman, you're doing it too, and yeah, the men too, yeah. can feel sh- shame and guilt even before they get there to that point to where they where, where, where I the felt it before happens, I so. left the house. I yes. mean, before I left the house, I felt wow. like this is wrong. <laughs> wow. and then my body kicked in and so I knew I wouldn't have to be sexual with a person mm-hmm. I had an excuse so that g- g- gave me the courage to get on the plane mm-hmm. and I was calling him every two hours <laughs> <laughs> babe you okay then when I couldn't reach you like, I don't want to talk to you but he, you would say go have fun stop calling yeah, me yeah, that's like, yeah. <laughs> We need to exchange phone numbers. I'm going to have to call you. Um, but that was my first, you know, experience with that. Yeah. You're so great. You know, you're like so even the first great. thing was you falling in love with the other guy. Like that, that wasn't a thing. It was, that wasn't a real thing for me. That's what I'm seeing now. Yeah. I realize that, you know, yeah. sometimes in the, in our lifestyle, in the swinger lifestyle, we were around most often. The love thing is what scares them more than anything. They're okay with you having, you know, another man, uh, or and I'm okay with her being another man. But when I think about falling in love with someone else, yes. whoa, that's a different yeah. story. Yeah. Because yes. to to us, when you are able to overcome the fears that you have about them being intimate with someone else, mm-hmm. another level is falling in love. Yeah. That's when you start losing your partner. Because in our, you know, in our circle, you mentioned it earlier too, in the monogamous mindset, mm-hmm. you can Love's only finite. love one person at a time. Mm-hmm. 
right. you only have so much love to give, and that's only for one person. Mm. So there's that big fear right there that people yeah. run into, that big roadblock when it becomes like you're going to go spend time with this person alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then there's a potential there for love to happen because I don't know what she's talking about with this guy behind closed doors. Yeah. When they're right. with me together in the same bed, I can know. Yeah, I know. Right. Talking about, oh, not you're not right. so sweet, love right. you, so you know that <laughs> now. The, but they're in another room without me. Yeah. What the hell are they talking about? Yeah, that is Woo! the yeah. That is yeah. the thing about the difference between polyamory and swinging. That mm-hmm. is the major difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And is it that you all want to stay away from dealing with that fear? And so you just don't go there, or is it some like you sweep it under the under the rug? You don't deal. You don't deal with it. Well, uh, I mean, we have, but a lot of people don't. Okay. So they have rules. A, they establish boundaries. Yes. Not rules. They establish boundaries, so that cannot possibly happen. happen. Right. Yeah. They try and control it. Right. But uh, the thing is, you cannot control people's emotions. No. Right? no and it's really interesting not. how you had that feeling. Before you went on to other That's things. Right. Yeah. And uh, the thing about it is that as my journey increased and moved on, and, you know, that was just the first time. But mm-hmm. as I, and then the first time you went, and then I was mm-hmm. in peril. But as we moved on, I realized that what you said is true. You cannot stop emotion. Right. There is no just sex, in my view. Yeah, I don't believe in that either. No. But what we found and what we wrote about in our third book um, the nine expressions of love is that I would meet men and they would make different chakra spin. Oh, I believe that. So, like, yeah, I would meet a man. <laughs> I would, <laughs> but I, I, you wouldn't know that if you just stay monogamous. You're all, so I would meet a man like my partner Tiger and my whole root chakra spinning. Uh-oh. And that's, Uh-oh. A different, <laughs> that's a different feeling than meeting my husband when I met him, my crown chakra spinning. Like, <gasps> Our talking is sex. Like, we stay up all night. We're talking politics. He's a guru. Yeah. That thing yeah. is just different. And so we mapped out those nine sensations. And that is how we help our couples, and men in particular, understand that I'm not going to leave you just because he makes my root chakra spin and you make my crown chakra spin. I need both of those chakras spinning. God. We relate to food sometimes, you know. <laughs> and I mean, I love spaghetti and, and tomato sauce. Mm-hmm. I could eat it really any day. Yeah. But there are times I get a little bit tired of eating just spaghetti and tomato sauce. That's mm-hmm. right. And That's I might right. need a taco. That's yeah. it. You need a taco. <laughs> you need a taco today. <laughs> Uh, or you might have to go down to Brazil because you need some Brazilian street food for real, like a different whole setting yeah. to eat the food. So my dream was Argentina. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with you. All right, let's do it. Okay. Okay. So that was something that I didn't know until I was actually poly. And that gave me a lot of security because mm-hmm. no woman is going to make the same exact points in his body spin as I do. No man is going to make the exact same point spin. And so that's how we teach our clients that there's no such thing as competition. And if you are no cop-outs, no dropouts, we're divorce proof. There's nothing that will make me leave any of my partners. Mm. So that's the security. And then the the other security of knowing which expression of the nine is this person fulfilling. Because if I have somebody spinning my root, I don't need another person spinning my root unless I just... Well, you can. I can. Yeah. Right. Some people, all they want is, is, is that one stimulation. Sure. They want multiple root sure. stimulation. Well, I have a lot of gratitude because Jackie stimulates a lot of my chakras. Mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is a lot of responsibility. <laughs> I don't want to spend all your chakras yeah, yeah. now. Because that's a lot of work. Hey, guys. We know that you enjoy OpenLove101.com. But if you'd like some extra exclusive never seen before material, interviews, blogs, join our private for members only, Open Love 101 Plus. You go to openlove101.com backslash members and join. Can't wait to see you there. Oh my God, Jackie, that was such a great episode with Kenya and Carl. And I am so looking forward to our next episode and we will also meet Tiger and Karina, their partners. Stay tuned. Great job, Jackie. And if you like that video, please click the button below. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll give you plenty of more. Plenty of more? (laughs) (laughs) Kidding me?